Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 7 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. Moving on with our discussion of the bond parameters, let us now come to the third bond parameter that is bond enthalpy. In the previous video, I discussed the bond length and bond angle. So let's talk of bond enthalpy. Enthalpy is the energy change that is associated with a chemical reaction. Bond enthalpy can be defined as the amount of energy that is required to break one mole of bonds, any type of bonds between any two atoms, but the condition is that they should be in the gaseous state. So let me just read the definition. It's the amount of energy required to break one mole of bonds of a particular type between two atoms in a gaseous state. Let us understand why do, do we say, uh, wait, let us just break this and try to understand why do we say a particular type? Because bonds can be of different types. They can be single bonds, they can be double bonds, triple bonds. So, but we are taking one mole, that is the reactant should be one mole and you're breaking one mole of those bonds, whatever be the type of bond that you're dealing with. So the breaking of one mole of bonds, the amount of energy that is associated with the breaking up of one mole of bonds and what is the condition? They should be, the bonds between the atoms should be in the gaseous state. These atoms, that is the reactants, should be in the gaseous state. The reason for that is that we, if we have to break bonds, uh, I would like you to think of bonds as friendships. So if there's a friendship between uh, two atoms, and you would not like any other external factor coming in when you're trying to break a friendship and there are other factors which are keeping them holding them together or keeping trying to pull them apart we don't want that so to avoid any other influence which may be for example if they were in the liquid state or in the solid state in order to break the bond you would first have to remove the atoms from that state bring it to the gaseous state so you would be using some amount of energy first to separate the molecule and once it is separated then you would come to the task of actually breaking the bond so we start when so the bond enthalpy would start after the after that step so that is why when we talk of bond enthalpy we do not want the involvement of any other energy there so we say that the molecule should already be in the gaseous state and so that there is no other influence and now the amount of energy that you need to break one mole of bonds of a particular type that would be known as a bond enthalpy now bond enthalpy can be more or can be less depending on the strength of the friendship that is the strength of the bond if a bond is stronger then breaking that bond would require much more energy but if a bond is already weak you just need a little energy to break it apart so if you imagine these to be friendships a single bond is just one overlap and one pair of electrons being shared a double bond is two pairs of electrons being shared so a double bond should be stronger a triple bond should be even stronger but that's not just that any double bond would be um, stronger than any single bond. No, it also depends on the atoms which have that kind of a bond. We'll come to that part later. But right now, let us see some examples of bond enthalpies. Hydrogen molecule has two atoms of hydrogen bound by a single covalent bond. So when you break one mole of these bonds and you get hydrogens in the atomic form, the two hydrogens separate, and you get one mole of hydrogen atoms here, one mole of hydrogen atoms here, the bond enthalpy here would be 435.8 kilojoules for one mole. So do you see what is the unit here? It is kilojoules per mole. So you're always talking of breaking one mole of bonds. So it is 435.8 kilojoules. If you have a molecule of oxygen, oxygen, the two oxygens in oxygen molecule are bound by a double bond a double covalent bond and we find that when it forms gaseous oxygen one mole of oxygen atoms one mole of oxygen that is two moles of oxygen atoms then the enthalpy why do we write a here it is the bond enthalpy we are converting molecules into atoms so it is also known as the enthalpy of atomization so 
This enthalpy of atomization for uh, the oxygen molecule would be 498 kilojoules per mole. This was 435. This is more than that. That is 498. Now, between two atoms of nitrogen, there is a triple bond. And when you break them into one mole of nitrogen, uh, that is two moles of nitrogen atoms, one plus one makes it two, you get the, you've broken one mole of nitrogen triple bond nitrogen. That is, you've broken one mole of triple bonds between two nitrogen uh, atoms, or rather one mole of nitrogen molecules. And the enthalpy of this reaction would be 946.0 kilojoules per mole. Do you see how the enthalpy increases with the number of multiple bonds? If the bonds increase, the enthalpy. Why? Because with every additional bond, the friendship is getting stronger and stronger. So there are two hands holding each other. If you had another hand coming and holding it, that's the second bond. Or three hands holding each other, that would be a much stronger friendship. So breaking that friendship would require much more energy. So this was bond enthalpy between molecules where the atoms are identical, diatomic molecules where they are the same element. If you have, for example, hydrogen chloride, HCl, then you could break the bond between H and Cl and one mole of bonds when they are broken you would get 435 30, you would have to use 431 kilojoules per mole of energy to break one mole of HCl bonds. Well that's easy to understand okay this is the strength of the friendship and therefore this is the amount of energy that you would require to break the bonds. But when you have molecules which are greater than diatomic, you have triatomic or more atoms in the molecule, then the bond enthalpy is not so simple. When you are breaking bonds in a molecule, the weakest bond will break first and then consecutively the stronger and stronger and stronger bonds would be broken. So when we talk of molecules, the idea of bond enthalpy becomes slightly complex and it is not as simple as it is for these diatomic molecules. Let us see the example of water. Water has, as I told you, has one oxygen atom as the central atom and two hydrogens which are attached to it. So you would imagine there's a 104.5 degree uh, angle between the two. You would imagine these two OH bonds to be identical. So when you have to find out the bond enthalpy here and you try to break the bonds of water, what do we see? We see that when water breaks the bonds, one of the hydrogen's OH bonds breaks and the amount of energy that is required to break one of the uh, bonds with hydrogen results in the formation of H and OH and the enthalpy is 502 kilojoules per mole. But you would now expect the second bond to break and you would expect the energy to be the same. But what do we find when the second OH bond breaks? The second uh, reaction would be OH where it breaks down to form H and O in the gaseous state. Of course, the reactant and product should always be in the gaseous state. Remember this. And the enthalpy here is 427 kilojoules per mole. Why is this enthalpy different? Because the first time when you broke a bond between water molecules, HOH, it formed a stable compound. And there's a friendship between these three friends. They are good friends. They are stable. They are happy together. And then you come and you break the friendship of one of these. It's very difficult to break the friendship of someone, uh, of a group, which is very, which has been friends for a long time and they are happy together. They are stable together. There is no... When an external energy, external source comes and breaks one of the bonds, it's very difficult. But once one bond is broken, now the system is left with only two friends. Out of the three friends, one is gone and you are left with only two friends. Now the friendship is not so strong anymore. They are not so stable anymore. So the second time when you have to break the bond between the other two friends, it becomes slightly easier. So although chemically you would expect both these bonds to be identical and they should have the same bond enthalpy, yet in the same molecule when this process takes place in two steps, the bond enthalpies are not identical even for identical bonds. And the language that we use in the uh, examination or in the books is that the chemical environment has changed. 
what chemical environment the friendship is broken already the group has torn apart do you know in these musical bands that you have when one of the players goes away the rest of the band or you know eventually splits up when one of the lead singers or you had the lead guitarist or one of the people in the in a band leaves then the rest becomes unstable and they also tend to break up so this is when we find that the enthalpies of two identical bonds is different then how do we talk of bond enthalpy for the OH bond in a water molecule instead of specifying the two enthalpies what we do in such a case is we find the average between them all the identical bonds whatever their enthalpies were we find a sum of them and divide it by the number of bonds number of identical bonds that gives us the average bond enthalpy so in the case of molecules which are uh, multi-atomic that is, or polyatomic as we call it the for polyatomic molecules we would not use bond enthalpy as such we use average bond enthalpies for identical bonds right so this was the third parameter that is bond enthalpy in the next video i will discuss bond order and we'll start with the resonance structures if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now